Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com coming at you with 2021 Topps Chrome Platinum Anniversary Baseball. A dual case break, a double header. One case of hobby, and then I got light in front of me right here. One case of light. 12 boxes here, 16 boxes in the light. All card ship. Thanks everybody for getting into the action. In fact, specifically thanks to this group right here for making it happen. Big thanks to the people who bought their spots straight up. And we only ended up doing one filler, which I appreciate. And congrats to the people who won spots in the filler. Thanks again to the people who bought their spots straight up. And all 30 baseball teams are in. Let's roll it. Randomize names and teams snake eyes two times. Easy. One and two. We got John down to Joe. Two times for the teams. One and two. Raise down to Dodgers after two. And uh, if you're watching live, I just dropped the checklist, the group break checklist, and the uh, cardboard connection checklist in the chat in case you need some help on what uh, what your team has. And I'll help you out in trades, too. Trade window open. John with the Rays, Joe with the Mets, Rick with the Astros, Steven with the Rockies, Michael with the Rangers, Charles with the Orioles, David with the Giants, Kenneth with the Reds, Gary with the Pirates, Joe with the White Sox, Kevin with the M's, Kenneth with the Blue Jays, Steven with the Cardinals, Kenneth with the Angels, Ben with the Marlins, Rick with the Padres, Tanner with the Brew Crew, Chris with the Royals, Jonathan with the Red Sox, Gary with the Tigers, Kevin, Last spot, Mojo with the Nationals, Brian with the Diamondbacks, Nick with the Guardians, Steven with the Twins, John with the A's, Kevin with the Yankees, Charles with the Phillies, Raymond with the Cubs, Patrick with the Braves, and last but not least, Joe, you got my Dodgers. So let's get all this on one screen. We're going to pause the video in just a moment, and uh, we'll give you a, a good little trade window here. And when we come back, we'll have the break. We'll see if there's any trades. We'll have the break. We'll discuss Juan Soto. Where is he going to end up? We'll discuss MLB draft, and we'll we'll discuss my uh, my future uh, my future golf career. All right, we're going to pause the video, and we'll see you on the other side. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. There were uh, there was a little bit of trade chatter, but in the end, no deals were done. So big thanks to everybody here for joining me and hanging out with me on a Sunday. Kind of a longer break, so kick back, relax, settle in. If you're re-watching the video of this, um, there will be a autograph and low number hit recap at the end of the video. All right, so there's the light. We're going to do the light first and then the hobby last. The light case has those diamond parallels, so that's exclusive to this set. I think there's like four per box or something like that. The autographs are really few and far between. So we're not going to see, we might not see an autograph, but if we do, it should, should be a nice little low numbered auto. So good luck. And of course, these are pretty cool because it's honoring the, the old 1952 design. There it is. So pretty cool stuff. So good luck, everybody. Well, the big news of the weekend, and everyone in the chat wants to talk about this too, Juan Soto. Where, where is he going to go? Juan Soto rejected. The Nationals offered him a 15-year, $440 million contract, which average annual value-wise does not end up as much. But, I mean, 15 years, that gives you a lot of security. You know, no matter what happens in your baseball career, that's guaranteed money. So, so that's sort of a sort of a big deal. I don't know what the details were. I don't know if that's been announced yet. If there were any like opt outs, I'm sure there were. But if there were any opt outs or something like that, these days most modern day contracts that are that are that long will have a series of opt outs. Um, so I don't know if that, those details have been revealed, but 
yeah, so I think, but still, four hundred and forty million dollars. That's a overall. That's a huge contract. I think maybe the biggest in baseball as it stands now, total wise. Um, so now, since Juan Soto re has rejected that, since he's rejected that, then uh, then I guess the trade window is open for Juan Soto. At least that's what the National is saying. They're going to listen to some offers, but what kind of haul does Juan Soto get? He's still super young, super talented, obviously, so it's going to be really interesting to see um, where he ends up or if it even happens uh, at this stage of the season, you know, by, by the trading deadline. Well, yeah, he said no because he thinks he can get more. More, more in terms of average annual value, and he's so young that he could probably have two big free agent windows for him. There's Robbie Ray to 199, and he could probably get even more then. There's Ken with the Blue Jays. And remember, all card ship. Right, and Diego's right too. Maybe, maybe he just doesn't want to be in. Uh, maybe he just doesn't want to be in Washington D.C. for that long. Rex saying, according to CBS, top three teams are Cardinals, Dodgers, and Yankees. Yeah, probably. I mean, you have to think who ha it's, it's two different things. Who has who has the best farm system, and who is able to? Because no one's gonna no a team that that gets him probably most likely doesn't want to empty the farm system if they have no assurances that they could sign or extend him. Right, so just think of any any team with a good farm system and deep pockets. Rebel would laugh if uh, if he takes a smaller contract to get out of Washington. He might he might take a smaller deal with a higher average annual value, and then take another bite at the free Asian apple. Diego's heard Mets as well. Yeah, I'm sure Mets with new ownership, they wanna they wanna continue making a big splash. The Yankees seem logical if if that means they're not gonna re-sign Aaron Judge. That would make sense, right? That Aaron Judge money goes to Juan Soto instead. Juan Soto's, Juan Soto's younger, healthier. I mean, the thing is, every team could use a Juan Soto. 16 out of 50, Blake Snell for the Padres. That'll be for Rick T. Yeah, Aaron Judge was a little bit of a late bloomer. Soto's what? 23 years old? So it could be a team that only cares about the next couple years? Maybe. If they're willing to, yeah, if they're in win now mode and you want to empty your farm system for a player that you have for a year and a half, you know, what teams take that risk though without assurances that you can, that you can, uh, uh, without assurances that you can re-sign him.
Yeah, I mean the the, the Giants could uh, Giants could go for him. Lefty lefty hitter in that ballpark makes sense. Yeah, Diego Kumar Rocker went third. I was a little surprised by that too. The MLB MLB Network guys were surprised by it as well. Here's Rex's Cubs. A lot of people's Cubs. There you go. Kate Horton pitcher. Sam Banks saying Cardinals can't waste these Arenado Goldschmidt years. Getting Soto is totally something the team would do. Yeah, that Drew Jones pick. Arizona fans have, have got to be happy, right, Diego? But yeah, getting Soto is something the Cardinals would do. That might mean moving... I don't know, who do you move for that? I mean, they're just... It's crazy, right? I feel like it's, it's it could be a combination of couple everyday players um, and draft picks, everyday players, draft picks, farms, like, you know, a few top five farm system guys. Tim Salmon, that old school Angels gear. It's pretty cool. There's Esteban Floriel. There's the Blue Wave, Antrington Simmons. These are the, the mini diamond parallels, by the way. About, about four per box. There's A Rod. I mean, you're gonna see a lot. I mean, it's kind of crazy to. It's kind of. I mean, it's hard to really trust any. Everyone's gonna be speculating, basically, Gilo. You know what I mean? I think people are gonna be spec. You can speculate anything from now on. Your your guess, your speculation is probably as good as mine or any other writer. That's uh, any other analyst that's out there, but but J Rod for Juan Soto, would you do that, Mariners fan? Mariners won what thirteen in a row. You're, are you are you doing that if you're a Mariners fan? J Rod could be could be the next Juan Soto with power, with the, with more power. What's up, Logan? Yeah, Libertor, O'Neal, Gorman for starters, probably. Maybe even a, even a Dylan Carlson and a few farm system guys. Did they win today? 14 now? Wow. Good for the Mariners. I, I, I said at the beginning of the season, um, I said at the beginning of the season, uh, The Mariners are equipped to be a breakout team. Wait, is that Cubs pick a quarterback, Diego? Is he even going to play baseball? Or is he going to pull a Kyler Murray? Is this Cubs doing Cubs things? All right, next light box. It's Paven Smith. Those, those uh, X Fractors not numbered. <laughs> you think it's going to take. You think Wilson Contreras and Ian Happ is going to get Juan Soto? Oh, that would. Talk about wishful thinking. <laughs> No more Garcia Parra, 28 out of 100 for Boston for Jonathan. No more.
Well, first of all, they got Kiebert Ruiz from the Dodgers last year, a top catching prospect. So they're not gonna, they don't need Contreras. Uh, Ian Happ, I mean, I think he showed a lot of promise as a prospect a number of years ago, but I mean, it is what it is kind of right now for Ian Happ. If you're gonna, if you're gonna chase after that, let, Cubs are gonna start, gonna have to move some of their top farm prospects, and a lot of them, I think. For everyday players, I mean, for everyday players, for everyday players, they're, they're, you're talking like Christopher Morel. You know what I mean? Yeah, but Ian Happ is a, uh, what, he's already 27 years old? You're talking about Juan Soto, a 23-year-old. You know, uh, I don't know. 274, nine home runs, and 42 RBIs on the season. If that's if that's a breakout season, then I, I think it's not much of a breakout. It's like a it's like a small zit. It's not even a pimple. But I think you're I think you if you're talking Cubs, I mean we can speculate all day. I mean, that's half the fun, but. But if but if if it's the if it's the Cubs, yeah, it's got to be guys like you know Christopher Morel has to start. You probably want Madrigal in the action too, and then guys like Brendan Davis and other top names in the Cubs farm system, and a lot more, and probably draft picks. Although Cubs draft picks might be worth a little bit more since you're you're thinking in the next few years or so they'll still probably be picking in the top ten. It's old school Randy Johnson in that old Diamondbacks uni. Yeah, it is a lot like KD. Like KD is going to empty out someone's team or pro set of prospects from from an NBA perspective. There's Alfonso Soriano, 49 out of 50. I think the last guy that came closest to the 50-50 club. This is Yankees edition going to Kevin. KD for Soto? Kevin Durant is from the district. He would be going back home, Gilo. Jeremy was gonna, yeah. Jeremy, Jeremy's right. Jeremy Harder's right. They don't really need Soto. Pitching is what is what the Cubs need. You're gonna throw something at the TV if they draft anything but a pitcher at seven. Diego was saying that he's a quarterback though. Is he is he gonna is he gonna pull a Kyler Murray on you guys, Jeremy? I don't know. Thing is, I feel like if if you're every GM in baseball has put in a phone call or an email to uh, a phone call or an email to the Nationals front office. I mean, everyone's going to be inquiring about Juan Soto. You know, every single every single team has to. Really, 
Maybe the Royals will get him? Except the A's. Well, except the A's may have a, 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 a pretty big farm system. They're at least making a phone call. According to MLB.com, uh, farm system rankings before the 2022 season, the preseason farm system rankings, Orioles, Mariners, Rays, Diamondbacks, Dodgers, Marlins, Pirates, Royals, Rangers, and Tigers are your top 10. So I don't know, Rebel. There's some prospects that the Royals have. I don't know, but I'll, if you're the Nationals, you're asking for Bobby Witt Jr., right? I don't know if they want to do that. I think Juan Soto is a... Uh, Juan Soto is a... Scott Boris client, right? It's Tony Perez, 76 out of 199. So, I don't know. So, I think it's got to be a combination of farm system. A combination of farm system and uh, a combination of you don't want to empty your farm system for a one and a half year rental, right? Half of this year and then all of next year. So, if that's the case, then you also have to think about what teams can also re-sign him or, or agree to an extension. Once he once he ends up there, that's what every team is asking. It's like, listen, we'll dump all, you know, we'll empty out our farm system, but we got to have some assurances that he's going to sign an extension for us as well. Giants have the money, Tim, but I don't know if they have the... Well, they're number 11. So, yeah, they might have they might have the farm system to move, but do you move guys like, you know, Marco Luciano? Do you move Joey Bart, Luis Matos, Kyle Harrison? Maybe a couple everyday guys? Uh, maybe you do. Jake Cronenworth, the Crone Zone, 159 out of 199. These are facsimile autographs, of course. The actual autos are in blue. This is the light edition, so we're not going to see autographs. are going to be very, very few and far between, if at all. We might not even see one in this case.
This is a 16 box case, so we're halfway there after we do, we're done with this box. I think Tim was asking me earlier, do I have a, do I have a plan at a, for the Dodgers to to make a run at, to make a run at a Juan Soto? I don't know. I don't think so. Where would I want Soto to go? Not anywhere in the NL West. Maybe somewhere in the AL. Let's get him out of the NL. I don't know what the Dodgers could move. <laughs> I think it's in Trey Turner back. Um, I don't know. If, I don't know if the Dodgers have pieces. No, I don't know if I could see a deal with a, with them. They're not going to want Cody Bellinger. They're not, Gavin Lux is not enough. So with a lack of everyday players, you know, you would have to start looking at, you know, Dodgers prospects. We already traded them Kiebert Ruiz, so they don't need Diego Cartaya. Um, our other the Dodgers other catching prospect we are on box 8 we are halfway through the light case you can see the rest of the boxes back there so does that mean I mean then you just have to unload like the top 10 close to the top 10 of the farm system right and future draft picks Bobby Miller Michael Bush Andy Pagas Miguel Vargas Ryan Pepio Names like that will have to will have to move. Plus draft picks. You know, the Dodgers have a lot of money tied up in Freddie Freeman, Mookie Betts. I, mean, I think they're probably going to want to try, so try to re-sign Trey Turner instead of, you know, paying Juan Soto. I would, I would rather put the Juan Soto money to Trey Turner, to be honest with you. Tanner hopes he goes to the Braves. What would it take? What, what would it take for the Braves? I think he's going to take a lot for the Braves as well. You know, it's got to be a couple everyday players. I mean, how many does it take? A couple everyday players and then a... Uh, and then a few top farm system guys. I mean, if I'm the Nationals, I'm 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 saying, all right, let's start with, let's start with Ozzy Albies, and Max Fried. Ozzy Albies, Max Fried, and then, you know, how about some, how about a Bryce Elder and a Jared Schuster. You know, guys like that. How about a Braden Shoemaker? Etc. And future draft picks, future first rounders. Oh, 
All right. Eighth box. Well, that Chris Taylor is numbered, look different. They're usually black and white. But in color, he got 65 out of 70. Chris Taylor for the Dodgers, Joe. Rex is saying Cade Horton, the Cubs draft pick, has already had Tommy John. That's good. That's a good thing. Get that knocked, get that knocked out early. I don't know where does that where does everyone think Juan Soto can go? I mean, there's just so many. Does he even get traded this year? I'm I'm sure there's some playoff teams that would love to get a Juan Soto. Add Juan Soto to the team right now. Uh, Alves looks like um, Amari. I don't know who that is, so it's over my head. Um, I don't know. Blue Jays desperate to win, right? Are they win now? Now, who's really win now? I guess Yankees are kind of win now. Would they unload parts of their farm system? I don't know. Rays, maybe? I don't know if Juan Soto wants to re-sign in Tampa Bay, though. Toronto, perhaps? I feel like they, they think they should be further along than they are. I feel like they need a little more pitching than they do offense. I feel like their offense is, is okay. Um, who could... I'm just I'm just looking at the standings right now. I'm not sure what team could. I would love to see the Mariners get Juan Soto if they didn't have to move like probably Julio Rodriguez, but but I'd like I'd like to see them make a big move. But I think they got to roll with what they have. Yeah, I guess that I suppose the Mets, right? It's Pete Alonso to 199. Mets could be interesting. Again, like I said earlier, they got new ownership that wants to make a big splash. They're getting Max Scherzer back. Oh, there's an autograph. Ron Goodry. These are not too common in the light. Ron Goodry, blue ink autograph. Classic Yankee going to Kevin Smith. 11 out of 15. Nice low number. Yeah, Gilo thinks the Mets make the most sense. But who would they have to move? I'm going to look at the Mets depth chart and their uh, prospect ranks for 2022. And next box coming up. We're a little over halfway through this first case. We've got about 30 more minutes to go, 25, 30 more minutes to go. And then another hour for this hobby case right here. So kick back, relax, settle in. Any Mets fans out there? Who, who would you move? I'm not too familiar with these Mets prospects, so not sure who would really. But my, you know, my thought process is, is that it's going to require a couple, uh, a couple everyday players on the younger side. And then some some farm system guys. I don't know if the Mets have the that sort of 
younger up and coming player kind of thing that would interest that would interest the nationals so maybe this would be more more prospect heavy maybe you're talking Francisco Alvarez, Brett Beatty, Ronnie Maurizio, Alex Ramirez, Mark Vientos, guys like that. Anyone in the top 10, Khalil Lee, Nick Plummer, Dominic Hamill, Joel Diaz. Some future picks, future first round picks. I mean, the problem with... Ooh, nice Braylon Marquez. Nine out of 10, nice low number on that too. That's the 70th anniversary par parallel. You can see the 70 behind there. It's cool. One of the Cubs youngsters going to Raymond. Yeah, I mean, Khalil Lee, still a number seven overall prospect for uh, for the Mets, for the, in the Mets organization. Jazz Chisholm, rookie refractor for Ben and the Marlins. So there's, you know, he's still in the mix. I think he still has probably, he's in AAA now, so he's pretty close to being called up too. That might be something that the Nats would like to see some top prospects that are going to be ready to contribute almost immediately. Take the sting out from losing, uh, from having to trade Juan Soto. It's smart though. I mean, I, f I feel like if you know a player's not going to re-sign, right? He, Juan Soto has this year and next year. The remainder of this year and the whole the whole of 2023 before he's a free agent. Now is the best time to to move him, moving him in the I guess or this off season, but moving him next in the by the trade deadline in 2023 doesn't make sense. He's a half year rental. You know they won't get as much back at that point. If a team can get him for the rest of the year and all of next season, that's a little more attractive. The Nats don't want. Uh, the, the Nats might w would like Mike Yastrzemski, but Brandon Belt? Come on. We know what Brandon Belt is. Brandon Belt plus Yaz, Mike Yastrzemski does not equal Juan Soto. You're going to have to add a lot of prospects there and a lot of draft picks. Oh, and the young closer? Yeah, I mean... We have to add that, yeah. See, the Giants have a, their top, what, top 11 according to MLB.com in prospects. They're gonna have to move a lot of those prospects. Gilo wants the Mets to trade for Ben Intendi. Do they need Ben Intendi? They got Mark Kana, Brandon Nemo, Starling Marte in there. So yeah, they could use a they could use a Benintendi. Phil's Rizzuto. Looks like there's some sort of uh, green parallel hiding down there. Let's see what that's all about. Harrison Bader, 82 out of 99. 
That's for the Cardinals. That's going to go to Stephen Flat. <laughs> what if they sent Khalil Lee back? How many times do you think that's happened? A player gets traded for a player and then traded back for that player? All right, next light box, good luck. And then we'll get into some hobby boxes. That's where we'll see a little more action. Each box has an autograph. What's going on in the uh, world of baseball today outside of, I think today is our last slate of games before, um, before the All-Star break, right? I think all the games are in the books. Looks like the Tigers-Guardians game was postponed. That'll be made up in mid-August. Reds at Cardinals was also postponed due to rain. That's going to be made up in mid-September. Uh, Merrill Kelly gave up one run in six innings. And that led, and Peralta's homer led the uh, Diamondbacks over the Padres 3-1. Diamondbacks uh, in the draft got Andrew Jones's kid, which should be, uh, which should be really, very interesting to see. Uh, Logan Webb pitched six strong innings for his ninth win. Giants beat the Brew Crew 9-5. to five. Uh, In Colorado, uh, Pirates beat the Rockies 8-3. to three. Newman, Chavis lead Pirates over the Rockies. Jace Young, I wonder if that's that other Young's um, brother. Josh Young, right? I think they're related. It's a Mount Castle rookie refractor. For the O's, that'll be for Charles. O's had the number one overall pick. Took a... Uh, Took Matt Holiday's kid. Got ton. That's what his autograph looks like. T O N ton. Tyler O'Neill, thirty-seven out of ninety-nine. Facsimile autograph to ninety-nine, going to Stephen Flat and the Redbirds. Kevin Millar, intentional talk. Yeah, that's that's pretty encouraging for those youngsters, Gilo. All right, next box. Let's go through the next set of scores here. That's right, they are brothers. So uh, Josh Young uh, plays for the it was in the Rangers organization. Little bro, little bro just got drafted. Mariners won 14 in a row. They're, they're one of the teams that probably wish the All Star break wasn't happening right now. They're playing so hot. They win their 14th in a row. Julio Rodriguez, Ty France are going to the All-Star game too, I think after some injuries. Rodriguez with a key hit to beat the Rangers. Mariners beat the Rangers 6-2. In Chicago, Cubbies beating the Mets 3-2. Nick, uh, yeah, Nico Horner gets three hits. And they stop their, uh, stop their losing streak. A's edged out the Astros. They beat him 4-3. Stephen Vogt uh, hit a tie-breaking single in the eighth. And the A's hung on to win 4-3. to three. 
Alright. Next box. And a Will Craig Red Atomic 15 out of 100. Someone was making me think that it was uh, out of 5, the red color. But uh, Pirates rookie card going to Gary and the Buckos. Angels taking a shortstop. He should be taking pitchers, no? All right, two boxes to go in the light case. All right, let's go through some more scores. I like going through the scoreboard in longer breaks like this. Dylan Cease. What, did he twirl a one-hitter? Pretty close to it. I don't know how many innings he went, but Cease. White Sox, top twins, 11 to nothing. They pounded out 16 hits. Twins only managed one. Maybe White Sox starting to come alive a little bit. Dominant Aaron Nola. And the Phillies shut down the Marlins for a three-game sweep. Phillies beat the Marlins 4 nothing. Rays lose Ramirez to broken thumb. Oh, no. But Brett Phillips, Randy Arjuna, and Francisco Mejia homered. Rays beat the Orioles 7-5. to Orioles have been playing some good baseball lately. Garrett Cole and uh, Matt Carpenter send Yankees over the Reds 13-2. to But poor Chris Sale getting plunked in the pinky. Fractured pinky. Nationals beat the Rays 7-3. Juan Soto homers as Nationals end nine-game skid. Victor Robles had a home run as well. And the Blue Jays beat the Royals 4-2 in Toronto. Kirk's, uh, Alejandro Kirk's two-run homer in the eighth, lifting the Jays to a 4-2 win over the Royals. Yeah, the Royals, in spite of losing a lot of guys to the COVID list, have been, have been uh, playing pretty admirably, I'd like to say. You know, earlier I said a QB doesn't seem like it would re relate much to a pitcher. Oh yeah, that's yeah. I think that's pretty. I think that's pretty easy comp actually. They're both throwing. <laughs> oh, oh, you think it relates more to outfield? No, a lot of a lot of high school quarterbacks are also pitchers. And that's usually the more common case. Kyler Murray, Patrick Mahomes. Most of the time, uh, I think I think Clayton Kershaw uh, was a. <laughs> everyone knows that Clayton Kershaw played high school football with Matt Matt Stafford. Clayton Kershaw, I think Clayton Kershaw threw it around a little bit too. Uh, no, no Brewers hits yet. We're we're just doing the light case first. Really, not too much going on here. There might have been some numbered cards, some refractors, but nothing significant hit wise. We're going to do the hobby case next. That has one autograph per box. That's where we'll start seeing some, some proper hits. I don't know. I don't think. Did, was Manzel. Was Manzel a uh, quarterback? I thought Manziel was like a shortstop. Sometimes you see shortstops too. Well, the quarterbacks rarely run to catch a ball, right? But yeah, you would think the, the, the outfield arm strength would be important but for throwing far. But believe it or not, those... Uh, their arms are so strong that it's a little more val that arm becomes more valuable as like a third baseman, shortstop, catcher.
Yeah, Mantell was a middle infielder. He was drafted by the Padres as a shortstop. Yeah, actually, you're right. And Kyler Murray was also a middle infielder, not a pitcher. Jameis Winston was, uh, he actually played two sports in Florida State. He was a quarterback there, and he was the closer for the uh, baseball team. All right, last box of that 16-box light case. That's the 75, so the, so the diamonds that are in color, parallels, and a 75, numbered parallels, it seems like. And nice, and Eloy Jimenez. So the autographs, very few and far between in these light cases, but we got two. That is for Joe and the White Sox. Four out of 15, those pink parallels, nice low numbers on those. Otani, Blue Wave, Jet. All right, ladies and gentlemen. But wait, there's more. It's a double header. Yeah, Rex. That there was a there was a whole uh, there was a whole ad campaign on TV with Tim Anderson and Bryce Harper. I think you you got to vote like uh, you got to vote for which meal was was like the best meal or something like that. Like some sort of some sort of thing going on. All right, let's wrap up this break, ladies and gentlemen. Now this is hobby edition. So we get, we're guaranteed, I guess on average, but we should be guaranteed one autograph per box. So this is where we're gonna to start to see some of the action here. I think maybe more, more parallels or something like that. Um, I think, Cody Bellinger and Fernando Tatis Jr. were in the most recent, I saw DQ commercials for them. Those ads must be on the interwebs too. A lot of ads end up on, on the interwebs as well. Let's see. Uh, I guess the, the symbolic first half of the season is over, boys and girls. Yankees lead, what, all of baseball, right, with 64 wins. Does it look like they can be stopped? Yeah. Dodgers are second with 60. Uh, they look pretty good. Although, 5-5 five and five to end the last 10 games, but still 64 wins for them. Then it's Rays, Blue Jays, Red Sox, and Orioles. Twins leading the AL Central. They're kind of limping into the All-Star break. Three, three and seven in their last ten games. The Twins, Guardians are a couple of games behind them. White Sox, Tigers, and uh, and Royals. The Yankees are ahead by 13 games, so they're kind of running away with the AL East. But AL Central looks interesting. White Sox are only three games back. Guardians are two games back, so it could be a dogfight to the end of, end of the year. Astros are ahead of the Mariners by nine games, but with that 14-game winning streak for the Mariners, 
Uh, looks like the Astros went six and four in their last ten. So, yeah, Mariners probably picked up a handful of games, four or five games. So they're, they're, they could make that AL West interesting. Rangers are 17 and a half back. Angels are 20 and a half back. A's are 28 back. So I don't think those guys are going to threaten anytime soon. We'll take a look at the uh, NL in the next box. What are the Angels with Shohei Otani and Mike Trout are 39 and 53, two and eight in their last ten. Three game losing streak going into the going into the All Star break. And don't look now, but Shohei Otani has an arbitration year in 20, for 2023. They're going to have to figure out arbitration. Then he's an unrestricted free agent at the end of the 2023 season, going into 2024. Now, the, the Angels, I'm sure, want him to sign an extension. Try to eliminate that arbitration hearing which is probably not going to go well for them, for the Angels, on the Angels' side of things. So they want to try to extend him, but does Otani want to extend with that team? Who I think hasn't, haven't really come close. Maybe they have come close, but they really haven't really made a, a threat to, to get into the playoffs, and that's something Otani has definitely said he wants to, wants to do. Here's Matt Foster, 180 out of 199. White Sox, Joe Locus. Is there a chance that Otani could could betray Otani for a billion? And a small market team? Maybe. If that small market team can get to the playoffs, I think that's that's what's important for Otani. Not and I don't think he's really thinking about the market that he's going to. The tricky thing with Otani is how long can he keep up playing, you know, hitting and pitching. He, I, I don't think he can do this at this level for the remainder of his career. Here's James Karinchek for Cleveland. That's 76 out of 99 for the Guardians. That'll be for Nick Koba. And another Eloy Jimenez autograph with a little dent in the middle of that card, unfortunately. This is for Joe and the White Sox, but another one for you, Refractor Autograph. But man, I, and that's 18 out of 199, Joe. I don't know what an Otani trade looks like. As crazy as it, as it is to say, um, as crazy it is to say, I, I think... I think Juan Soto will probably carry more value than Otani on a trade market. Oh yeah, we were. I, I just read that off, Rex. Um, he's in his last year of his deal, and then he has an arbitration year for 2023, and then he's an unrestricted free agent in 2024. That would be his age 29 season. So the Angels, if they don't want to lose him, well, I'm sure the Angels are trying to extend him right now. But, uh, but if he refuses, then I'm sure the Angels would probably want to trade him and not lose him for, just like the Nationals and, and Soto, they don't want to lose Otani for nothing. the Cubs were really close, Rex. I, th I think, I think in, in subsequent interviews, Otani, I think, said he was definitely looking at, at the, uh, more at the West Coast. I think probably Cubs, Dodgers, Padres, maybe even the Giants, I think, were, were closer in the mix. I think he eventually chose West Coast and AL because of the DH. I don't think most NL teams really had a chance. Um, but now that the Universal DH is there,
But now, now that opens the door for the entire league. Next box, good luck. The crazy thing is now that the Juan Soto thing is out there now, you know, maybe trades for like, maybe deals for Frankie Montas and Luis Castillo kind of are in limbo now. Tanner, I would I would I would suggest to you don't buy fillers. Just buy spots straight up. Less of a heartache. 119 out of 199. Lee Mazzilli. For the Mets, that'll be for Joe. I always tell people, don't do fillers. Buy us five full spots straight up. But some, a lot of times that, that that falls on deaf ears. The fillers just it's just another chance for me to disappoint you. I don't like doing that. Oh, there's Gary Sheffield in his Florida Marlins gear. Nice. That'll be for Ben and the fish. Anyone been marlin fishing? That's something I wanna I wanna do someday. You have a low budget. Well, listen, I would I would every time you want to think you want to do a filler don't and put that block of money aside right put that aside next couple times you feel like you want to do a filler take that money put it aside and save that up for for like a pick your team break or something like that so that way you can get your team and then cross your fingers I'm sure that I'm sure there's like a I'm sure there are tons of like charter boats that I can rent to go catch a marlin. Now what I'm thinking is if I catch this marlin I can I keep it, right? I guess I've been deep sea fishing here in LA a lot of times. I guess you keep your fish. But a marlin's so big. Can I just could I could I just could I just uh Get a bunch of, uh, get just a bunch of fillets of this delicious marlin fish so I can eat those, eat it later. You do that too, Tan? Well, see, that's the thing. That's the way I'm only disappointing you once. If you did like four fillers and, and, and you don't hit in those four fillers or something like that, that's four times I'm making you sad. If you do it the other way, only one time. Marlin's delicious? What does Marlin taste? Marlin's like a, what, the closest to like swordfish? I've had swordfish. Is that the same thing? But yeah, Marlin fishing is something, something I want to do. Enjoy your seafood on the coast. It's terrible in the Midwest. Yeah. 
Seven out of seventy-five. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not interested in eating seafood in the Midwest. Although in Vegas it's not so bad, but then again, if you're getting seafood in Vegas, there's so many of those high-end restaurants in Vegas that are getting seafood, and all the buffets that are getting seafood. So even the local shops end up getting some decent seafood too. There's Mark Kana. Blue ink autograph for the Oakland A's, John Fernandez with the A's on the board. Well, hey, Tanner, keep getting your ABs in. We'll get we'll get back to our, our winning ways soon, I hope. Nick Madrigal, rookie. No, wrong again, Rex. A, they spell their names differently. And uh, B, it's Matt Holiday's son. Remember Matt Holiday, old Cardinal Matt Holiday? Roy spells his last name Halliday, I think, with it, right? H A L L A D Y? Jackson Holiday is Matt Holiday's kid. I remember as a cardinal. Sean Murphy, 58 out of 100. Well, yeah, who's who's the second player again? Second pick? Was that? I guess I could look it up. Was that Andrew Jones's kid? Yeah, it was Drew Jones. Um, yeah, actually, I'm with you, Rex. I, 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 I mean, these drafts are so difficult because there's so many high school players that are involved. I, and I'm not watching high school. I love baseball. I'm not watching high school baseball. I'm not keeping track of that unless fan graphs or something tells me about these high school prospects. Drew Holiday, though, there, there's some tape on Drew Holiday that's that's out there, or Drew Holiday. <laughs> Drew, uh, Drew Jones, Andrew Jones' kid. Um, yeah, he, he looks like, he looks pretty amazing, but I don't know, who knows? I, I like how MLB's trying to sexy up the draft a little bit here, like, like the NBA draft or the NFL draft, but I mean, it's so hard to, to mock any of these drafts and to, you know, and to really... project how, how these players are going to do. Oh, nice. Jonathan's saying your son played against Drew several times. So what's the scouting report? Jonathan said, kid's certainly a stud. You know, I'm thinking, now, now that I'm looking at this, well, how are we feeling about Bowman draft baseball? Right? Bowman draft baseball is going to look pretty good, right? Jackson Holiday, former... Uh, Right, like Rex was pointing out, the first two sons of former MLB players, right? Jackson Holiday, Matt's kid. Offensive players too, shortstop, and then Drew Jones outfielder out of high school. And then Kumar Rocker, who's had a little bit of an interesting story behind him. Then Tamar Johnson shortstop, Elijah Green outfielder, Jacob Berry, corner infielder, outfielder. Kate Horton pitcher, but Brooks Lee offensive player, Gavin Cross offensive player, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Josh Young's brother, Jace Young, being picked up by the Tigers. So that could that could be good for Bowman draft. 
Usually Bowman Draft has the number one overall pick. And then regular Bowman Baseball has the number two pick in there, something like that. So I feel like this year's uh, this year's Bowman products could look pretty good. So we'll have some. So keep an eye on jazbeescasebreaks.com. Whenever they come out, we'll have pre-orders and we'll we'll be happy to rip all that stuff and go prospect hunting. There's Joey Lacazy to 199 for the Mets. Be for Joe. Yeah, Diamondbacks certainly do, right? And oh, sorry. I'll go through the NL standings in the next uh, in the next one. But Diamondbacks, just, you know, will probably have a, they have they're a forty win team. They'll they'll probably have a top five, top ten pick again by the by the end of this season. There's eleven out of fifty. Jose Abreu. It's a cool orange wave. White Sox. That's going to be uh, Joe Locus. So. I mean, I mean that could be part of a nice little trade. Here's another son of a former baseball player, Justin Crawford, got picked up by the Phillies. Son of Carl Crawford. So I might remember Carl Crawford. Carved out a pretty solid MLB career. And there's Yasmani Grandal, another White Sox for Joe Locus. White Sox. Yeah, David B Davidson, we need our pitching to catch up to the rest of the team. A lot of young talent for sure. 10 out of 150. I mean, to the point where, you know, maybe... They're, if those prospects are a little ahead of schedule, I mean, that could start looking like, I don't know, what's another young team right now that's looking interesting? Blue Jays, White Sox, like those, those kind of teams. A lot of young faces playing well. Yeah, the White Sox, they, they do have three autos out of the handful that we have so far out of the but hey we still have one two three four five six seven eight more autos to go a lot of time for for a lot of different teams to hit in the uh, NL NL East let's look at this let's look at how the standings look going into the uh, all-star break the Braves are still keeping it close they're two and a half behind the Mets Phillies have some work to do they're at eight and a half behind the Mets Brewers and Cardinals looks like they're they're, they're going to battle it in the NL Central all the way down to the end, and uh, Dodgers leading the NL West pretty comfortably. They're uh, they won nine of their last ten, four game winning streak to go into the All Star break, ten games ahead of the Padres. Tanner saying Braves will win the division. I think that's going to be a fun, really fun race to watch. That's for sure. But I don't know. Jacob DeGrom, Max Scherzer for the second half, that's going to be pretty pretty difficult. Currently in the wild card race, the... Uh, what, the... Rays and uh, Rays and Mariners. Rays Mariners are in the top two in the wild card race. Blue Jays, Red Sox, Guardians, Orioles, and White Sox. They're three and a half games back. White Sox. They're all kind of in the mix to get into. Remember the wild card's been expanded a little bit this year, so those teams are in the mix. Braves, Padres, Phillies, Cardinals. Uh, Giants, all in the wild card mix. Outside shot for the uh, Marlins, who are five and a half games back of a wild card spot, and 
And uh, and the Rockies six and a half games behind the wild card spot. But Braves, Padres, Phillies, Cardinals, Giants. Looks like they're in the mix for a wild card spot. Extra wild card does make things a little more a little interesting here. All right, let's see what interesting things we can find in this box. Good luck. Remember, all card ship. I'll do an autograph recap towards the end or at the end of the video. Here's an autograph. That's CC Sabathia Gold. Bronx Bombers, Kevin with the Yankees. 43 out of 50. We, the Giants got that spot. Tim's Giants got that spot. Yeah, they're a half game back of the Cardinals and Phillies for a wild card spot. It's Mike Piazza, 33 out of 199 for the Mets. Joe Locus. Yeah, a lot of White Sox and Yankees, but still a lot of autos to go. All right, next box. Anyone watch the uh, anyone watch the British Open or the Open Championship today? What a win by uh, by Australian Cameron Smith! Take a look at the back nine of his card. Pretty amazing. Roy McIlroy was there. I thought he was going to do it. Um, I definitely thought he was going to do it, but. And he didn't play a bad round, but like he said, he, he was like, I didn't play a bad round, but I didn't play a great round. Cameron Smith played a historic round, and it was uh, it was pretty amazing. He was he was he rallied back from four shots. Hovland was in the mix too. Victor Hovland didn't quite didn't quite play it well either, but I think uh, I think a lot of people were were you know. Especially with Rory being a being a, from Northern Ireland, I think there was he was definitely a fan favorite out there in Scotland. Um, there are some Aussies out there for for Cameron Smith. I like Cameron Smith. I like Rory too. It would have been nice to see Rory win one, but not quite for him. Yeah, can, right, Tim. Thirty on the back nine. It, it was pretty crazy, but he he started the back nine with th what one two three four five birdies in a row, par par par, birdie on the 18th, 30. Shot a 64 on the day. Cameron Young, American, might be uh, had a great open as well. Tommy Fleetwood had a great open. Dustin Johnson top ten finish. Bryson had a top ten finish. Jordan Spieth top ten finish. I uh, 
Who did I have in my pool? Did not cash, last two majors I did cash in the pool that I'm in. This time, no, not even close. But I think I might have still cashed in the year end part of the pool. So I'll keep you posted on that for those of you who care about that sort of thing. Rod Carew, twins. Stephen Flat won that spot, got randomized the twins and gets Hall of Famer, legend, Rod Carew. It's the big D, Don Drysdale. And Vlad Guerrero Jr., 76 out of 99. Nice one for the Bluebirds. That goes to Kenneth. There's Mickey Moniak. There's the Duke of Flatbush. Mark Melanson, 66 out of 100 for the Bravos. That'll be for Patrick. All right, next box. Almost there. Stay on target. After this, I will be taking a little a uh, little break. And I think we do have a quick little break after my break. And I see, I only see four orders coming in. So if you want to keep going after this, jazbeescasebreaks.com, keep it going. Next break that sells out, we'll be able to do Look, let's look at my schedule. That's always pinned in the chat, dropped in the chat. At around 7.45 Pacific, I would think. 8 o'clock, remember 7.45, 8 o'clock Pacific, give or take. We'll be, uh, we'll be ready for the next break that fills. We still got about another 20, 30 minutes here on this one. Then the break, then a quick little 15 minute break. And then after that, we'll see uh, what else we can do. I'm sure by then, Hopefully we have something else filled up. So for the open championship picks that I made, which are also available on that break schedule, if you click a few tabs over to the right, um, it's where you pick uh, a player for in each tier by world ranking. So one through 10 in the world rankings, 11 through 20, 21 through 31, so on and so forth. I had Matthew Fitzpatrick, had a good day, but not good enough. Max Homa, I had a lot of higher hopes for him. He's a local guy, um, but he was cut. Shane Lowry had a decent day, but not good enough. Tommy Fleetwood actually finished pretty well. Lucas Herbert and Robert McIntyre were my sort of late round picks, but, but yeah. What's for dinner tonight? I'm gonna to eat some uh, some hard-boiled golf balls tonight, Rex. They say the more the more golf balls you eat, the better you can become at golf. Crack those delicious shells open and eat the eat the deliciousness inside, and it gives you the power and energy you need to keep the left arm straight. Keep your golf balls flying, flying true. Any break credit giveaways? Not tonight, Tim. Unfortunately, we are not made of money. We did the 30 days of giveaways in June. A lot of break credit given away there for free. Can't do that all the time. Is Jake Arietta three out of 50. Orange wave for the Cubs, Raymond. Out of 199, Shogo Akiyama for the Reds. That'll be for Kenneth.
And there's an, another CC Sabathia. Hmm. Here's a little variety here in this case. And there's Kirby Yates. Been trying to get into the golf, ladies and gentlemen. I've been talking about this for a while, but we had a, we had a good uh, local customer of ours. Heard me talking that I want to get into the golf, and I was going to get some clubs and whatnot, and he gifted me some irons, which I appreciate. Another good customer of ours gifted me an, a driver. Just need to add a few more things, and then I've got I'll have a full set. Been starting off with the uh, with some iron work, which, which they say is where beginners should start. So I'm kind of been working on the uh, working on the old seven iron, getting pretty consistent with that. Hit the driving range uh, last couple days, working on some shots. Went one day with my uh, with uh, with Nick's brother actually, who is who golf's a ton. Play some local tournaments and stuff like that. Had a lot of fun with it, um, and was and said that I that I looked okay as a beginner. The basic mechanics were looking okay. Most of the balls were being hit straight. You know, I, I'm, I'm not, not really know. I don't really know how to aim it. Um, but I am hitting it true. It can get addicting, definitely. Definitely addicting. Yeah. Well, I, I even have, uh, I even have a. A little uh, a golfing mat here at work, Tim, and a bunch of the, these like these squishy like foam practice balls. So usually after work, I'll hit against our uh, <laughs> I'll hit against our wall that's here. We got a pretty pretty high wall on the side of our building in our parking lot. So I'll just I'll hit like. You know, I don't know how many I have, 20, 25 of those foam balls. So usually after work, I'll, uh, you know, spend 20, 30 minutes hitting against the wall. I feel like if I do that every day and some, you know, and if I do, I don't know, maybe 80 to 100 balls at the range, on the weekends, I feel like I could uh, I could be decent enough to get out to a to a par three course and goof around there. Oh, nice! You worked at a golf course and hit a large bucket every day for lunch. I mean, you can get good pretty quick if you if you have basic mechanics down. And then the rest of it's just repetition. It's Johnny Cueto to 199. So yeah, I feel like I feel like uh, I can put in some time here after work with this with the old swing, and then put some extended time in on the range during the weekends, during my weekends, Friday and Saturdays. Carlton Fisk, 61 out of 99, Red Sox edition for Jonathan. I feel like if I do that, I could get pretty decent. Here's an Astro, Christian Javier. I think he's been having a really nice season. That is for Rick T and the Strohs. 003 out of 150. There you go, Rick. Some nice color there. And four more boxes to go. We're almost there. So yeah, so I'm I'm excited about the golf. I, like I said, Nick's brother plays a lot, and uh, 
you know, it's a good a good excuse for us to hang out. And I know Mick plays a lot too, or wants to play more. I don't know how often he does play, but I'm sure Nick wants to play more. So we kind of do that. Maybe we'll have a future uh, little Jaspi golf tournament, or maybe not even a tournament, but just an outing. Maybe a Jaspi golf outing. That that could be pretty fun. For charity or something like that. But if I hit consistently enough, I feel like I could I could feel I don't know, still a little nervous about hitting like a getting on a par three course and goofing around, but at some point I better uh, I just have to do it, right? So maybe maybe in a few months or so of consistent hitting, maybe I'll feel confident enough to to goof around on a par three and see how I do. Yeah, maybe some golf. Jaspi Golf PGA 2K. Azzy, what's going on? Uh, can, can you recommend some boxes to break? A Tom Brady fan, and I'm awesome. Thank you. Um, I don't know. Well, we don't do individual boxes here. But if you go to our Instagram channel, at Jaspi's Breaks on Instagram, we have individual boxes there. And there might be some boxes over there where you can chase a uh, you can chase a Tom Brady. But it just all depends on your budget, your your level of risk, how risky you are, how, how risk adverse you are. Well, that's that's the other plan, Rex. Once I win the uh, Mega Millions. That's at five hundred and thirty million dollars, or something like that. Once I win that, then I can uh, build my miniature golf course. Although my work on my irons, Rex, would probably have nothing to do with the miniature golf course. But I guess if I play more golf courses, maybe I'll, I'll have more experience on maybe designing a golf course. There's David Price Gold to ten. It'll be for Joe, Joe, and my Dodgers. Doing some long relief work for my Dodgers. What happens to all the base cards and refractors, Mr. Roush is saying? They get shipped to the people that have these specific teams. All card ship in this break. All card ship in most of our breaks. Sometimes we say vet commons don't ship. So, so that would be a common. That would not be a common. That would be a common. But usually parallels always ship, autographs obviously always ship, relics obviously all, always ship. But if we don't, the only time we don't ship anything would be no vet commons, it'll say in the description. But most of the time everything ships. Okay, most of the guys over at the Insta say they have them. Yeah, that's a little different. On Instagram, they're personal boxes. So, um, so since they're buying an uh, entire box, we let them. You know, they have the option to to not receive vet commons if they don't want them. But on the group breaking side of things, you don't have a choice. It's it's either or. Eleven out of seventy, Doc Gooden. That'll be for Joe and the Mets. I don't remember, Gary, but I will be doing a recap at the end of this break, so we'll see. We'll see in a few boxes. I've honestly kind of been on autopilot and working through this, this long break here. Rex, when I win that, don't forget who's your longest. I won't. I, I won't forget. Ever forget, Rex, whether I win it or not. <laughs> yeah. Every once in a while, there's no ship breaks. Better keep an eye on the item description to make sure you see if it's a no ship break or not. So read those item descriptions carefully, ladies and gentlemen.
So the golf major season is over with the end of the British Open, the Open Championship. So I think there's a couple of PGA tournaments that are going to happen. And then I think the Wyndham tournament would be the last one before the FedEx Cup playoffs started. So I think a lot of the golfers, especially golfers who are in like the, I don't know, maybe the top however many of the tournament will probably be taking the next couple, next tournament or two off. Maybe some of the guys looking to get into the playoffs might play those tournaments. And then the FedEx Cup playoffs. There's Willie Stargell, 51 out of 99. Pirates, that'll be for Gary and the Buckos. Mark Teixeira. Rolled as Chapman, 105 out of 199 for the Yankees. And Jared Weaver for the Halos. That's going to go to Kenneth. Two boxes to go. Almost there. Did Rob Manfred just pronounce it Oregon? Interesting. It must be a local dialect. Wait, are my Dodgers picking? What are the Dodgers picking? I don't think the Dodgers have a first round pick. No, they don't. No first round pick. Cardinals just made their pick. And then it's Blue Jays, Red Sox, Yankees, White Sox, Brewers, Astros, Rays, and Giants. Tigers optioned uh, Spencer Torkelson, I'm saying, uh, MLB Trade Rumors dot com, I think, was that yesterday, today? Struggling a little bit. He'll be fine, I feel like. But, um, he's got to work on some stuff. Fergie Jenkins. Cubs auto. It's going to go to Raymond and the North Siders. Our 
What's up, Kevin? I know soccer's doing more breaks out of this. I hope so. Keep checking the website, jazbeescasebreaks.com. We're always getting, uh, multiple times a week, we're always getting stuff from our distributors, so. I feel like I'm sure there's some soccer in the mix as well. Ripken Jr. Uh, that is a 25. Nice low number on this 70th anniversary orange parallel. It'll be Charles and the O's. Jazz officially rebuilding. Logan's giving it, what, a 10% chance that Donovan Mitchell stays. Yeah, I mean... You may as well tear the band-aid off, right? There's Wilson Ramos for the Tigers. That'll be for Gary. Yeah, that Ripken is pretty nice. Like, it's a bit of a color match too, right? Orange parallel with the the orange O's. Will that sell well? Nice. That's. I'm sure Charles is very happy to hear that. I'm assuming this, this is a platinum anniversary edition. Is this the only year they're going to do this? That's what makes this product pretty unique here. And we're saying Miles and Quentin Grimes look great on the jazz bench. Is that is that a is that deal going to go down? Oh yeah, I mean. Jazz got a, I was, I mean, not too long after, um, not too long after Rudy Gobert was traded, maybe a day or two afterward, I actually didn't really look too closely at the deal. And then we were doing a break, uh, I think it was like a prison basketball break or something like that. And then I, as I was ripping packs, I went and looked at the trade and I was like, that Wikipedia page can't be right. They didn't give up all that. And then people in the shower like, they, they did. <laughs> so, good, good for Logan's Jazz. So, I mean, now at this point, do you just rip the Band-Aid off and then try to try to get another big haul for? Try to get another another big haul for Donovan Mitchell. Who's saying Westbrook to the Jazz? Optimistic Lakers blogs. ESPN writers who want to get clicks. Those are the only people saying that. Heard from who though? The Lakers fan-sided blog. Top five moves the Lakers can make to get Donovan Mitchell. No, no one's... Yeah, a Westbrook trade would be... If a Westbrook trade gets pulled off for a, for a decent... If, if there's a decent Westbrook trade that's out there, you would give uh, Rob Palenka executive of the year uh, right then and there. What if it's all a ruse, Mr. Roush is saying? All those all those picks that the Jazz got could be flipped for a big player? It could be. I mean, Jazz have been playing some, having some really solid seasons. It really would be... 
you know, it's not like they had a bad season and they're like, blow, time to blow it up. Here's CC Sabathia to 199. Maybe all those picks turn into, turn into uh, Kevin Durant. Although, does Kevin Durant really want to leave? Trade Westbrook for Juan Soto and make Juan Soto your point guard? Uh, how tall is Juan Soto? He's 6'2". I'd like my point guard to be a little bit bigger, but... I feel like he's, he's pretty quick. He's got good footwork. Good field vision. And Bucky Dent for the Yankees closes things out. Last autograph of the break. Kevin Smith with the Bronx Bombers. Good randomizer there for you with a spot that you got straight up. 52 out of 99. Hey, happy birthday, Logan. I realize it was your birthday. Your birthday and soldier Anthony Edwards for $3,000 today. Congrats. Happy birthday to Logan Collister. And thanks, everybody, for getting in. That was our 2021 Topps Chrome Platinum Anniversary Baseball 28-box doubleheader case break, a hobby box and a light box. Big thanks to everybody who got into the action. Really appreciate it. That was from the light case. We got two autos from the light case. And it's not just about the, uh, about the autos. There's a lot of excellent parallels here, too. That's a, that's a good chase as well. So thanks everyone for making this happen. A pretty long break, but a lot of people were chatting with me and hanging out with me through the break and that made life a lot easier. So I appreciate that as well. Thanks very much everyone. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. I will see you next time for the next break. Bye-bye.